washed in. It's amazing that that song was chosen because the name of the sermon is Apply the Blood. So we ask the Lord and thank the Lord for what he is and what he does for us, how he moves upon us, how he moves before us, how he grants us an audience with him. And that we sometimes get overwhelmed by that reality that we are actually in the presence of the living God. And we thank God for it. We thank God for you all who are here today. We pray for those who aren't here. They're away from us at this time. And we ask God to uh, uh, grant them peace and safety on this, this Sabbath day. Many of you, many of them are joining us via the conference line and the broadcast. And we want to say welcome to those who are doing uh, those that those using those avenues the broadcast as well as the conference line to join today. And we ask that at this time that we would all come together in prayer so we can ask the Lord to send his Holy Spirit to us today to give us the words to speak, but also give us an ear to hear and a heart to understand. So let's join together at this time for a word of prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, again, in the name of Jesus, we come to your throne of mercy and grace today, thanking you so much for this, your most holy day. Thank you for allowing us to assemble here this morning. And as we open up your word, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come to lead and guide us in your truth, Lord, to give us clear understanding. For, Lord, this is what we stand in the need of more than anything, to understand the truth, the way, and the light of it. Father, we pray for those all over the world who are bowed down now. Lord, honoring you as the only true and living God, we ask that you would be in their midst. Father, that you would give your ministers power to speak with authority, Lord, so your people may hear and obey. Father, remember those under persecution for your name's sake. Father, give them mercy today. Show them, Lord, and encourage them. Lord, keep them, Father, in this hour of need, for one day this too may be our testimony. And in the name of Jesus, we ask all things. Amen. Once again, happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's try that again. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Amen. I mean, you are the loudest speaking people I know of, and we can't get a good happy Sabbath out of you. Lord, help us. We thank God for the day. We thank God for his way. We thank God for you all being here today. Amen? Amen. And then we were all set to give a sermon that would be one that would cause people to hang their head because we were studying something the end of this week and, it, and we noticed how the world has gone to pot and how the things that are coming, the things that are, the things that currently exist are overwhelming and they're more than we can bear. And I said, Lord, you know, I was telling my wife this morning, I even got down. I said, Lord, there's, there's no hope. We are not in position. We are not even of a mindset to deal with what's happening to us. We go back and listen to the pundits. We go back and listen to the news reports. We go back and listen to the people who are telling us there that this is happening and there's nothing you can do about it. And so we said, Lord, help us. And what he said is apply the blood. And you're talking about three encouraging words this morning was apply the blood. And it encouraged us because it gave us hope once again. See, there's no fighting this war without the blood. There's no protection without the blood. So we're going to see why the blood is necessary. And then we're going to, by God's grace, see how to apply the blood in our lives. Amen. So let's go, if we would, to Book of Revelations, chapter 12 this morning. See, I was thinking that we were going to go to Revelations 13 and then go to Revelations 14, and we were going to talk about how terrible the world is and how awful our situation is, and we're all going to perish. You would love to hear that, wouldn't you? Because that's what a lot of people like to hear. Oh, they want that fantastic, fearful stuff to be talked to. God said, teach them how to apply the blood. For there was a time that the blood was needed in Egypt. And there's a time now that the blood is needed as well. Amen. 
And let's go to Revelation chapter 12, and let's walk this thing down by God's grace, why the blood is necessary and what the blood is. And in verse 10 of Revelation is chapter 12. He said, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. That sounds like a good time. Isn't it? Because the enemy has been defeated. Amen? But he says in verse 11, and they overcame him. Who is him? The devil. The enemy. They overcame him by the what? Blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their own lives until the death. Essential elements in this. They overcame him. So when we look at the enormity of Satan's work here on earth, God says, we, over, we can overcome him. So we don't get depressed anymore. We don't get down anymore because the, the, whatever these people over here, the government is doing this, the churches are doing this. He said, they overcame all of that by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did like Ezra. They, they, they purposed in their heart that they, not even, they didn't love their own lives even unto death. And we look at that and say, Lord, that is the only way to get out of this thing. This is the only way we're going to make it to the kingdom is by the blood of the Lamb. Now, do we understand what the blood of the Lamb is? We have difficulty discovering who the Lamb is. God's going to help us this morning. Amen. He said, look, the blood of the lamb is what's needed to overcome and what the blood does to us and what the blood is for us is why we're going to have hope and courage this morning. Amen. We don't worry anymore about what's going to happen. You know, if you live long enough, you see prophecy fulfilled in your own lifetime. And I'm not an old man by any stretch of the imagination, but I have seen prophecy fulfilled in my lifetime. When you look at this thing for 35 years, you see things happen. You said, Lord, you sure said that was going to happen. And our, 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 our elementary understanding of prophecy back then has matured just a little bit. So now we know really what's going on. <laughs> see, we kept looking at the actual manifestations of what's going on and call it at the fulfillment of prophecy. But when you go behind the curtain, you really see what's going on. And God's judgment is here now. He is starting to judge this earth. And we need to be under, understand that there's always this time in history that God's judgment is coming, that is starting to, to come upon us. But just like Egypt, there was the blood. Amen? Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Oh, if we don't have this blood. If we don't understand this blood, we are going to lose. We are going to be defeated. We're going to be destroyed. Because there's death is coming. And I'm not talking about in your house or your auntie. Massive death is coming. It's coming. It's already started. And, and they're just not telling you about it. These things that God said would happen in these days are starting to happen. But there's the blood. And we need to hide in the blood. Exodus chapter 12. We're going to read. Let's read 3 through 7, and then we're going to come and read 12 and 13. Now, Exodus chapter 12, it says in verse 3, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a what? A lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb, of a, a house, a lamb for a, a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let them... Let him, I'm sorry, and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Okay, so he said, look, I want everybody to get a lamb. Now, if you, you all don't have enough, get with your neighbor and you all get this lamb together. Amen? And verse 5 says, your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. 
and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, was there a specific lamb to get, type of lamb to get? Yeah. It had to be what? Yeah. Had to be without blemish. It had to be a male of the first year. It had, it had a, 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 a specifics about it because God is very specific about his work. You couldn't bring a three-legged lamb to this party. You couldn't bring one you bought on sale to this thing. You couldn't bring just anything because what was about to occur needed to, to, to be exactly what God instructed it to be. They didn't understand what was about to happen. And sometimes we need to rest in the fact that we don't understand. Just do. Just do what he said. We don't have to understand. We might be able to understand after the thing happened, but stop trying to figure it out before the time. Just do. Say, Lord, yes, yes. That's it. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it. I'm sorry. They should take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. For I... Verse 12, let's go to verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will do what? Smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for what? A token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, a lot in here. We're going to try to keep it. <laughs> We're going to try to try to keep this a little, a little short. But remember what we read in Revelation? We overcame them by the blood of the lamb and by the what? The word of their testimony. The word of their testimony was what? When, when, when the angel came by, he needed to see your testimony. Didn't he? And what was, the te what was your testimony during this night? The blood, the, the blood of the lamb. Where? On the door. The, blood, the testimony was this. You obeyed God. You got the lamb. You, 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 you did what? You, you sacrificed the lamb. The, the, the blood fell into what? A, a, a bowl, a basin. But you know what? You couldn't stop there. You had to have a testimony. And that testimony is when you dip the hyssop, the branch of hyssop, and, and you struck the doorpost. And you put it exactly where he said to put it. Mm -hmm. That was your testimony. That was a testimony of faith. And the blood would do you no good unless you applied it to the door. The sacrifice of Jesus will do you no good unless you apply it to the door. Remember that. God, Christ died. The blood was shed. But unless you apply it to the door of your house and your heart, it does you no good. But what happened? That night, when, when the angel, death angel came through, they saw the testimony of Jesus Christ on the, on the door, and he did what? He passed by. Do you see how important the blood is? Yes. You see how important the testimony is? See, you can't just have the blood. You got to have the testimony. You got to do something with the blood. You got to obey exactly what God said to do with the blood. What is hyssop? It's an herb that does what? It's known for what? Purification, cleansing. Cleansing. Think about that. Why did he pick that? He said, man, put the cleansing, put my blood with it. Do exactly like I asked you to do. I need your testimony to line up with my way. You know, there were a lot of Jews that didn't do that that night. Because they, they might have gotten the lamb, but they got this. And who was instructed to put the blood on a doorpost? <coughs> it was who? Who? The father. The father. What happens if the father was negligent? What happened to his house? Somebody died. The father is inst was instructed. Today, the father is instructed. Don't wait on anything. There's that story that we hear all the time of the, the little girl who was who was uh, couldn't walk, and during the past, so this in this particular instance, and she said, "Dad, 
father. D did you put the, the blood on the doorpost? And the father had said, well, I, I have instructed my servant to do that for us. We're busy doing, you know. And so it got closer to the time, and, and the little girl said, Father, Father, uh, did you put the blood on the doorpost? He said, oh, I'm sure it happened. You know, my servants always obey what I tell them to do. And so it got real close to the time, and she said, Father, just let me see. Take me outside. Let me see that the blood is on the doorpost. So the father took the little girl outside, and guess what? The blood wasn't on the doorpost. And so what happened? The man quickly <laughs> obeyed the Lord. So you can't, you can't uh, uh, give your assignment to someone else. Fathers, please hear this today. It's your job to put the blood over the doorpost. And you see why Satan came at the family? To make sure you didn't know your father. Mm -hmm. To make sure the fathers didn't know what father, being a father was. It was make sure that the blood never got applied to the family. Lord, help us. But you know what? You can start it now. If your father didn't apply the blood on the doorpost, ask God to be the father for you. Ask him to teach you how to do that. Amen? You're going to see how important the blood is. So the deaf angel passed by. Because the blood of the lamb was on the door and the testimony was given. And so our testimony should be that, that we have applied the blood on our doorpost. Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to find out. I know we know this, but let's find a scripture that tells us about this Passover and who really our Passover is. Because we're not slaying lambs anymore, are we? You might want to take some hyssop from time to time, but we're not taking that hyssop and putting it over the doorpost, are we? Why? Because 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 5, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be, what? A new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our what? Passover is sacrificed for us. So who is the lamb? Who's the Passover lamb? Okay, we, we just saw what the Passover lamb represented. We just saw actually the, 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 what, what, what they were instructed to do. Christ was killed for us. But Christ dying for us isn't enough. He is our Passover lamb. And if you believe that, you will do what the Passover told you to do, which was to put the blood on the doorpost. That's what he means when he says, I'm your Passover. He said, remember, I gave you that lesson back in Exodus. He said, put the door, put the blood over the doorpost. And was there power in the blood? So much power that the death angel passed by. But you had to testify of it. You had to believe it. You had to actually place it upon the door. Your intellectual belief is not enough. I know Christ died for me and my sins, and thank you. That's the blood in the basin. That's not the blood on the doorpost. See, when you put the blood on the doorpost, you went down and said, I will follow you. I will do what you ask me to. I will tell the world by my life that everybody who walked by those doors that night knew one thing. They testified that they believed in the blood. When they walked by our houses, what did they see? Do we have the blood over our doorpost? Go to 1 Peter, if you will. 1 Christ never forgot. See, the Old, the First Testament, I like to call it, because when we say Old Testament, people start saying, well, we don't have to do that no more. The First Testament is a wonderful book. It teaches us the lessons we need to learn, and Christ never left them. The lessons he taught then, he never left them. The disciples never left them. Peter, we will read something Peter said. He said in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, let's go to verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. He always referred to the old way because the old way was supposed to be teaching us this way. And he said in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, he says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and what? Sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace 
unto you, and peace be multiplied. You see what happened? He said, it was the sprinkling of the blood of who? Jesus Christ that got us through that night. He was the Passover lamb. He was the Passover lamb then, and he is now. Now, are we applying this blood to the doorpost? And, 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 and what does this blood do? Why was the blood given? How do we apply it to us today? We can't, we got to get past this, I believe Jesus died for my sin. That is the beginning of beginnings. Do you know Satan believes that too? That's why he's so busy now. He doesn't, he wants to want you to take it from the fictional to the literal. He doesn't want you to, to go from the, the mental to the actual testimony. He doesn't want you to do that because he has no power over you if you're covered what? With the blood. He can't get through the blood, y'all. Isn't that good to know? Amen. Isn't that wonderful to know? All of his tanks, all of his bullets, all of his governments, all of his churches can't get through the blood. Don't you think we ought to apply it? We all know that Christ was our redeemer, don't we? One function of the blood is redemption. Go to Ephesians, if you would. One function of the blood. See, we don't believe. We're going to believe this. Because we're going to speak it this morning. Y'all okay with that? We're going to ask you to speak it this morning. Because there's something about a, a verbal testimony. There's something about a testimony from your own lips that you believe is better than sitting there saying, mm -hmm, yeah, I believe that. Mm -hmm, yep. Y'all don't mind, do you? I know you, you're worried. You don't know what brush y'all going to do. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1. Redemption is, an, it, it is one of the things the blood does for us. He said in verse 6 of Ephesians 1, to the pra praise of the glory of, of the, his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. He, who? Who made us accepted? Christ. How? By his blood. He said, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Aren't you happy you were redeemed this morning? You couldn't pay the price. I couldn't pay the price. We couldn't buy ourselves back into what he, he, he termed the beloved. We couldn't do it, but the blood did it. Through his blood, we are redeemed. We are bought back. We are bought with a price. And that price, only one could pay through the blood. Amen? Aren't we happy about that? We should say thank you, Lord. Thank you for redeeming us. Did he wait on us to recognize? The redemptive power of the blood. No. He did it anyway. You know, when the blood was shed, were you alive? But he knew you. He said, man, down here in this, this two thousand, these, these centuries and centuries from now, somebody needs me to redeem them. I was looking at the crucifixion of Christ. And what he went through before he got to the cross. See, we all, we all see the, the, the version of him on the cross, right? We got, you know, pictures and all kinds of stuff. But what he went through before he got there. I think Isaiah says he didn't even look like a human at first. By the time he got to the cross. See, his beard had been ripped out. Anybody, I know, <laughs> sisters, you don't, you can't do this. To rip the hair out of your face. Then these thorns, who were very sharp, very hard, were beat on his skull. You know how, how, you, how you get hit and you, you know, you, you've been hit in the face? And you, you big old, thing. well, his was so big they burst. The blood just ran down his face. And they beat him. Before they got to the scourging, they beat him. 
with rods. By the time he got to the cross, she wouldn't recognize not only who he was, but if he was a human. That's the blood we're talking about. That's the love we're talking about. This is what he did for us. And he asked us to explain this this morning. He said, I redeemed you, and this is what I went through. But I, he went through it how? Willingly, didn't he? He went through it joyfully, not looking at the current circumstance he was in. He looked at the promise of his father. He said, if you go through this, they'll be redeemed. Thank you for redemption. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. The blood redeems, amen? Do we need redemption? Are we sure that he has redeemed us? 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's begin at verse 18. Because we want to know what you have been redeemed with. 1 Peter 1, 10, 18, I'm sorry. It says, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with what? Corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain <laughs> conversation received by tradition from your fathers. He was saying it wasn't your tithing that redeemed you. It wasn't that, it wasn't your church that redeemed you. It wasn't how good a person you are that redeemed you. It wasn't anything about you that redeemed you. Verse 19 said, but with the what? Precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. When did we first hear that? In Exodus. So you see how these things really work together? That's why you can't throw out the first testament. If you threw out the first testament, you wouldn't even know what he was talking about. You couldn't understand Christ's sacrifice for us. He said you were redeemed. We, I am redeemed. You are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Redemption is as you've been bought back. Period. We know that? You did something so heinous that it was no way that you could be bought of the beloved again. There was no way, nothing in your power, nothing could bring you back to where God wanted you in the first place. You were canceled. But somebody said, here am I, send me. Do you think we need to apply the blood? Do we need redeeming? P apply the blood. Amen? One more, one more redeeming scripture. 107 of Psalm. See, it was the blood and what else? The testimony. It was overcame him, overcame the enemy, overcame the plans, overcame the schemes by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. Are we testifying that we have received the blood? Or are we questioning the validity of the blood? See, because there's no name given under heaven. None. So you can't go Buddha. You can't go Allah. You can't go anywhere else. There's only one name under heaven given to man. There's only one mediator. See, that's why Jesus is so important. That's why Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You can't say, I worship God and leave Jesus out because you have just shifted to another God. That's why, oh, a higher power. Man, your landlord is a higher power. You worshiping him? Don't pay the rent. See how much power he got. <laughs> Don't say higher power. Don't believe that. You use the word God as if it's just something. Oh, I have my own God. How do you have our own God? How do you create God? Some people, I, I listen to our brother Lonnie. He, he hears a lot of these things. And people say that uh, my, my higher power is the ocean. And it makes perfect sense to people, like, I guess, my higher power is nature. I was never satisfied with something I could, could, could see. There had to have been something bigger than that. And God says, I am here, and Christ in me is why you are redeemed. So when we go to 107, verse 2, understand, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? 
is in at the testimony. How did they say so that night in Egypt? By putting, applying the blood. They said so. They testified. He said, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of who? The enemy. When he found me, where was I? In the hands of the enemy. Where are we? Hopefully, we have all received the blood and we're not in the hand of the enemy anymore. Aren't you in the Lord's hand now? Who made that possible? What made that possible? His blood. You know what? You're not in the hand of the enemy anymore. Somebody ought to say, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's maybe just me, but I remember the hand of the enemy. And he said, you're not in his hand anymore. You're in my hand. And what did I do to deserve it? Nothing. He said, I'm just going to redeem you. Come on. You claim me? You're going to put the blood over the doorpost? Yeah, come with me, man. And something else was very important that night. When you put the blood over the doorpost, you had to stay where? In the house. Because that's where the blood was. Remember that as we frolic around, as we in and out with God. We're going to get caught. You're going to get caught outside the house. That's why when you put the blood on your heart, you're always in the house. We need to stay in the house. Remember that. Now, he said redeeming, redeeming, right? We have been redeemed. We, can we say amen to that? Amen. By the blood of the lamb. Amen. The second one is cleansing. The power of the blood is a cleansing power. Go to 1 John. Do we need cleaning up? Yes, See, redeeming is different than cleaning. Redeeming, you just got, got to come to the house. You hadn't been cleaned up yet, but the blood cleans you too. So we're going to go through, and it's, 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 it's remarkable. How many times were the blood sprinkled? Mm. Seven times. There's seven ways. There's seven things the blood does. You think that's a coincidence? We've been to one, redeeming, right? Father, we're going to run. Cleansing. First John chapter 1. He makes this statement in verse 7 of John, 1 John chapter 1. He says, but if we walk in the light, how? As he is in the light. Stop. That kind of counsels your own religion, doesn't it? It kind of counsels, I'm going to serve God the way I want to serve it. What's more comfortable to me is how I'm going, that's the approach I'm going to take. He said, if you walk in the light as he did what? Walk in the light. We have fellowship one with who? Another. We have fellowship one with another, and we have fellowship with the one who is the original light. I often wonder why people don't fellowship one with another. The light has gone out. But let's keep reading. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, does what? Cleanses us from what? Our sin. See, you were redeemed before you were clean. You remember that? You know that? He said, I, I died for you before you even knew who I was. He said, now let me... Take the same blood and clean you up. Cleansing is what we need. Do we believe that? Oh, let's go to Psalm 51 just in case we, we've forgotten. Psalm 51, verse 7. Psalm 51, verse 7. He said, First, I need to clean you up. My, your, my blood cleans you from all sin. Do we need cleaning? Amen. All, how much? Just for a little thing that we do. All sin. He said, my blood cleanses you. Apply the blood. But you apply it the way I ask you to apply it. We in, oh, the answer key is wonderful. To have the answers to the test is wonderful. To know which direction to go is wonderful. God's GPS is fantastic. You never get lost if you stay in the word. Amen? It's when we start veering off and listening to another voice. God said, the blood the blood. What does verse 7 say in 51 of Psalm? Purge me with hyssop. Oh, we, 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 another, another appearance of hyssop. 
He said, I shall be what? Clean. Wash me. And I shall be what? Whiter than snow. Did we not sing that this morning? I did not speak to my wife and, 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 uh, and uh, Sierra about what song to sing. Whiter than snow. This blood washes us whiter than snow. Amen. Amen. The blood redeems. The blood cleanses. Apply it to the doorpost. Now, number three, justification. It's different than redemption. It's different than cleansing. But it's the same blood. Go to Romans. Justification is just remarkable. I don't even know how that even works. I don't know how they came up with this plan, and I don't care how the father came up with it. I'm just glad he did. Amen. But look at justification in Romans chapter 5. See, it redeemed us, okay? It, bought, it paid the price. It's cleaning us up so we can be presented because we can't go dirty to heaven. You do that, don't you? There's no sin in heaven. There's no, there's, there's, you don't make the trip. You don't even want to go. If sin is so much in you, you have no desire to go because heaven must be what you want it to be. What a selfish point of view. Well, I don't want to go if they ain't got no ribs. <laughs> I saw a commercial said, I think, what the man say? I, I think if you go to heaven, they're going to be some ribs. <laughs> Adams. God said in Romans chapter 5, let's read verse 9. He said, much more than being now justified by what? His blood, we shall be saved from what? Wrath, wrath through him. There's wrath coming. We see that, don't we? He said, I'll save you. But he said, you're justified by the, you know what justification really is? is just as if you never sinned. You are justified. When you say, Lord, help me, forgive me, boom, it's like you've never sinned in heaven. Now on earth, your brothers and sisters are going to make sure you remember your sin. They're going to make sure you know you are not clean. I want you to understand, claim it. Claim the justification and the power of the blood. Say, I know as if I never sinned. Why? Because of the blood. I'm covered in it. Have we sinned? Yes. So we have an advocate, don't we? The blood, people. As if I never sinned. The record book will say, forgiven. Justified. What did you do? How did we, did we, we save ourselves? We can't justify ourselves. Let's go to Zechariah. This is a bit, this is the, the greatest account of justification for me. Zechariah chapter 3. It's if we never... All of our good things, all of our good intentions, all of our, we can't do anything. We can't be justified by what we do. It's the blood that justifies us. Man, it keeps us from praise and work, doesn't it? It keeps us from being arrogant about how wonderful we are. It keeps us from saying, I am learned, I know it all, so therefore I will make it to the kingdom. said, my blood justifies you. Zechariah chapter 3. Let's begin at verse 1, if we would. And he showed me who? Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at what? His right hand to do what? To tell him he's not justified, that he's not redeemed. That's what Satan is an expert in. He keeps you from believing in the blood. Verse 2 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, what? The Lord rebuked thee. He didn't have a whole long conversation with him, did he? He said, the Lord rebuked thee. 
And you know what Satan had to do? Be rebuked. He said, the Lord rebuked thee. Oh, Satan, even the Lord that have chosen. Hmm. He chosen Jerusalem, rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Oh, when you put the door, the blood over the doorpost, guess what you are? You're a brand that's been plucked out. He said, and the Lord is standing there saying, I rebuke thee, Satan. Get out of their life. And what did, what did Satan have to do? Stay under the blood. He has to stay out. Satan, he can't attack the blood, can he? He can't get past the blood, can he? Because the blood says rebuke. And when the creator God says anything, it is. Amen? Keep reading. In verse 3. Now, Joshua was clothed with what? See, before the blood, what are we? He was Joshua, the high priest. Now, you had to be a certain kind of guy to be a high priest, right? This wasn't no average run-of-the-mill Christian. <laughs> but God said, I looked at him in his own ability, and he described it as filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, <laughs> take away. Take away the filthy garments. But he saw him standing there, and he said, take away the filthy garments. Oh, he didn't stop there either. Th that's what's good about it. He just didn't leave you there with nothing. He said, take away the filthy garments. And something else happened. And unto him he said, behold, I have caused. I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. That's two. See, first he took away us from us. Amen. And, and then he did something. He said, I, I caused thy iniquity to what? Pass. pass. I, you know, I clean, I, I, I redeemed you, I, I, I fixed that. <laughs> then he did something else. And I will clothe thee with a change of rain. And then, look at this. You got a new garment on. Why? Because you applied the blood. Because the blood did all this. Amen? Oh, we're not finished. <laughs> and I said, let them set a fair what? Mitre upon his head. What's a mitre? He said, look, I did this. He said, I put you on a new garment. But I, I want you to be more than that. I'm going to put something on you, what? Your head. Your head. That symbolizes what? Kingship. Let them set a fair mitre upon, mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord prophesied unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou will walk in what? My ways. And if thou will keep my charge. Then thou shalt also judge my house and also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among who? These. Now, where were they? Who? They were. He said, I'll give you a place here if you testify to me, if you apply the blood to the door. Do you see the exchange here? Joshua, filthy. Jesus, righteous. Joshua could do nothing. Jesus said, take that garment. First, let me fix your problem, Joshua. Satan, leave him alone. That's, that's one of the things you got to come to grips with. Jesus says, leave him alone. 
Because while he is attacking us and we don't have the blood, we can't even look up and ask, can we? He says, say, leave him alone. Look, you, you, you're filthy. I have taken your iniquity from you. How did he do that? It was the cross. He said, I took your iniquity upon me. That's why I can take it away from you. He said, then I'm going to put on you a, 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 a garment fit for a king. Yeah, take this and put it on top of your head. And if you will continue to have the blood over the doorpost, I'll give you a place with me. Are we all right with that? Are we happy with that? So the cleansing power of the blood and the, the, the justification. Do you see that it wasn't us and there's nothing we can do to be justified? Do you see Joshua couldn't do anything either? But what God did for him is justify him. And if we would just walk with the belief that we've been justified. And when I say walk in a belief, not this concept of belief. I'm talking about walking with the blood over your doorpost and testifying of it. Can we do that this morning? Can we say amen to justification? Can we say thank you, Lord, for justifying us? That's all right. I know we're not a hallelujah church. Sometimes I wish we were. Sometimes I wish we could really praise him for what he is and what he does. It's okay. Now, no, no, I didn't ask you to run up and down and, 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 and do the jig up here, but just sometimes say thank you because we ought to be thankful. So now we're down to number four. Uh-oh, sanctification. You know, the blood sanctified. What does sanctified mean? Set aside for a holy purpose. A holy purpose. Filthy rags set aside for a holy purpose. Hebrews, if you would. Mm, mm, mm. I believe it's Hebrews 13. I believe that's 13. Hebrews 13, 12. Wherefore, are we there yet? Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might do something that is beyond our comprehension. He said that he might sanctify the people with what? His own blood. What is, this, what is in this blood, man? Now we have sanctification. He said, I will sanctify thy people with my own blood suffered without the gate. He said, I had to suffer this way. I had to do this for one purpose, and that's to sanctify you. I'm calling you out of the world for a holy purpose through my blood. Oh, the doorpost, the side post. Lord, if we would just do that. He said, I'm calling you out for a holy purpose. I'm separating you from the world by my blood. You had no option. I had no way of being asked to do anything for God without the blood, being covered with blood. And we're out here trying to do it. We want to do God's work. We want to say we're God's people. We want to say we're God's servants, and we don't have the blood over the, the, blood over the door. We didn't take the hyssop. We, we, we decided to, to kill a, 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 a dog. Because it's an animal. You know, that's how we think. Yeah. And, we, and we say, well, no, we're not even going to go through the pro We're just going to go down to the blood bank and get some blood. We don't need hyssop. Man, you got, you got, we got some hay down there we can do this with. In the name of the Lord. See, we're, we're, we're called. Lord, help us. Sanctification. The blood sanctifies us. We okay with that? Thank you for sanctification, Lord. Thank you. We always think that the blood always covers our problems. But let me tell you something else that God does with the blood. If you would go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 17. See, there's something else in this blood. There's something else in this blood. Leviticus 17, let's read verse 11. We've heard this scripture before because we, we help people, aren't we? 
This is the scripture we use to tell people do not eat pork or not eat beef or not eat anything that has blood in it. But look at it like this. Leviticus 17, 11, for the life of the flesh is in what? Blood. It's in the blood. And look why. He said, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make a what? An atonement for your souls. Are we talking about pork chop? Are we talking about physical food here? I've given you his blood for the atonement of your soul. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement. How are we going to be at one without the blood? What does atonement mean? At one with him. He said, I've given you the blood for that. So I give you life. He said, this is your life. My, you live. What, what's the scripture that says, uh, uh, ye are dead, but your life is hid where? Here it is. Is why? The blood. It's his blood now flowing through you. It gives you life, doesn't it? He said, I, I, I made a way to give you life by his death. I have brought you to a point where you can be at one with me through his blood. So we get life. Amen. Go to John if you don't believe it. John 6. Oh, J Jesus was trying to, 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 to make it plain to us in John 6. He said, look, I, I want you to understand what this blood is all about. It gives you life. It, it is me. I shed my blood so you may live. So one of the, one of the, the great attributes of, of, of the blood is life. And we're in John chapter 6. Let's start at 53. John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you what? Eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink what? His blood. Ye have what? Oh, no. Now, we're not cannibals. Do you see what he's saying? The flesh, you got to live the life. The blood, you got to drink it. You got you to accept this blood because it gives you life. If you don't have it, you don't have life. That's what the book said, right? Let's keep reading. Verse 54 says, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, have he what? Oh, not just physical on this planet life. We have eternal life. When you accept the blood, when you start placing the blood over the doorpost, his, this is the time you receive eternal life. Now, you can forfeit it. You can give it back. See, we, we need to understand when we live like this, we live eternal life. Because this is what's going, what? To the next stage. When we leave this earth, we're going to be living like we've been living, eternally. See, we go, when you think of eternal life, you, we automatically get a, out a calendar. Eternal life is a reality. It's not a time. We understand that? Eternal life is a way of life. It's not, why, if it's eternal, what's the calendar got to do with anything? Eternal life is a way of living. He said, drink my blood and you'll have eternal life. Let's keep reading. God says, I'll raise him up at the last day. Just in case you go down. Because you were living et eternally, guess what? Come on up. You might have had a brief little respite. Yeah, you might have, well, you know, uh, I was going to sleep. He said, rest on. It's all right. You already live eternally. So I'll come back and get you, and you'll pick up where you left off. Amen? Amen. Uh, <laughs> I know. Let's read 55. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me. And what? I in him. It is his life in us. So the blood gives us life. This is some remarkable blood. He said, sprinkle seven times before the altar. This is how you apply it in your life. See, we're going to take it out of the, 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 the mythical and place it in the practical. Because we walk, we say, well, Aaron did that. I don't know what that means. You do now, <laughs> don't you? 
Apply the blood in your life. Go to 1 Corinthians. It gives us life. It gives us life. And eternal life at that. Now, if the Lord delays his coming, no, the Lord cannot delay his coming. The Father's already said it. But if we go down before he comes, that doesn't mean we didn't have eternal life. Doesn't mean we didn't live eternal life. So don't let the devil come in and say, see, oh, they passed away. So obviously that's not eternal. <laughs> he said, man, if you live this way, you're already there. See, we got to understand, this is above the physical. This is a, in a whole different dimension. See, in the spirit, there is no end. Didn't he say, I am the one who inhabits eternity? So he said, I'll live in you and you in me. So we're living in Christ. Where are we? Eternity. We are in that dimension, aren't we? I won't use the word realm because people get funny about that. I'll call it the reality. We live in a reality called eternity. And that's, what the, that's what's there. He said, if I live in you, I'm not coming down. Come on up here with me. I did my time on this earth. I'm trying to, I came down so you could come up. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's start at verse 24. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. He said, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in what? My blood. Th this do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the what? The Lord's death till he come. Not that the Lord died. It's that the power in the blood is what you're showing. You show the blood every time you do this. You take the blood. You, you eat it. You say, Lord, I remember the blood on the doorpost. I thank you for the blood on the doorpost. That's why we do these things. This is not, we don't do it because this is genuinely the, the, cookie or the whatever they call Eucharist. <laughs> this is really the body of Christ. We are remembering the power of the blood and the redemptive power of his sacrifice and that the real life that we can live now because of it. Help us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it. So we get life, don't we, from this blood. Go to Hebrews 12. We're going to be out of here in in just a little bit. Not too much longer. Hang in there. Because now your house and your heart will have the blood on it, folks. You know how to do it now. And you know why you're doing it. And you know the power of it. And you know why. Lord, I'd be a fool not to take this blood. Hebrews chapter 12. There's something called what this blood does called intercession. You know what intercession is? Hey, this blood is an intercessor. Look at this. Hebrews 12 and verse 22. He said, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You, he said, what? You will come. See, that's what we talk about eternal life now. He said, man, you come into the, pre this, this is, when you apply the blood, this is where you are. And unto the city of the living God, the, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels. Man, uh, sorry. <laughs> to be there now. See how we always think about heaven as somewhere, or, 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 or the reality of, of the spirit, sometime down the road. Now you are, when you apply, this is where you are. The innumerable company of angels. Do you know if he would let you see it, you really wouldn't worry about any plan that Satan has, period. 
it's like it'd be like you and a two-year-old. Let's say you're walking and a two-year-old is going to attack you. I mean, that two-year-old has sat in his little playpen and he's figured this thing out. I am going to do this. And the two-year-old runs with you with all his fury. And, you look, and he hits you as hard as he can. And you look now, yeah? Wh wh man, what are you doing? Satan is a two-year-old. He's given up his rights. He's given up everything that could, could, could ever affect you because he gave up the glory. He gave up the position God gave him. He said, I, I'm, I'm not satisfied with this. I want to be like the Most High. And he didn't say it like we should say it. See, Satan is a counterfeiter. Y'all know that, right? So when, Ka when in Isaiah he said, I want to be like the Most High, that's something that we should be saying to ourselves, but his motive was different. He wanted to be worshipped like the Most High. We want to be like the Most High because that's what he asked us to be, the image of God. Oh, we're going to study that one day about the great counterfeit. Satan has nothing original except the mystery of iniquity. And I don't even care how that started because God called the mystery. I'm all right with that. <laughs> Spend my time trying to figure out why Satan sinned. I don't care. He did. He did. Move on. God is great. Okay. So we're in the company of an innumerable company of what? Angels. Let's keep reading. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn. Oh, you mean there's a church? So we can't be these little independent people? I got my own ministry. I don't come to church. I don't come to the assembly. Well, you're not going to heaven. Yeah, I said it. God said there's going to be a church there. God set up churches in Ephesus, in, in Thyatira. He set it up in Corinth. He set it in Rome. He set up this system. Who am I to say is wrong? I try to find it where I need to be. Church? All right. You say church is the one? We go on church. <laughs> because there's a church of the firstborn which are written in heaven. If you don't like church, sorry, you're not going to like heaven. Lord, help us see this. He said, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the what? Spirits of just men made perfect. By who? The blood of the Lamb. And to Jesus, the what? Mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling. Here we go again, back to this sprinkling of the blood. That speaketh better things than that of Abel. Oh. See, Abel's blood cried out for vengeance. Jesus' blood cries out for mercy. That's why it's better than Abel's blood. Abel was key. His blood was shed by force. Jesus' blood was shed willingly out of love. You see why it's better than Abel? The blood is pleading for us right now. He pleads for us. Do you know when you forget to pray, the blood is pleading at you? When you get so busy, you can't open your word. The blood is pleading still. Do we believe that? Once again, thank you for the blood. Last one, number seven. It's called access. We have access. Because of the blood. The blood gets us in. It's the ticket. Amen. Go back to Hebrews. Lord, give us sight. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, I believe it is. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's begin at 19. Does that say, having therefore? Having, therefore, having, therefore, not going to have, having, therefore. We're in, in verse 
19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest. How? Ah. Now, what's the holiest? We, we sanctuary students. Is he talking about the courtyard? <laughs> Maybe he's talking about the holy place. He's saying, with boldness, we have access by the blood of Christ to the holiest of holy. Who's there? Who else is there? We got access to the Father through the blood. We have the blood gives us access to the Holy One of Israel. I know we take that for granted. I'm going to say thank you. Verse 20 says, by a new and living way. The blood is this way. And he said, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our what? Hearts. What's the, say it again. Sprinkle. No, we're not talking about that, that, that mess they do with babies. The heart is sprinkled with the blood. It's sprinkled from what? An evil conscience. We have a conscience. See, the devil doesn't want you to believe any of these seven things. He'll catch you on one of them. Well, Lord, you know, I know you justify me, but you really can't sanctify me. I read about Joshua once a year. Well, you know, he forgives. I, you ever think you've done something so bad that he can't forgive you? Guess what? That's a lie of the devil. He said, God says, the only problem I got, if you start blaspheming who? The Holy Spirit. I got a problem with that. <laughs> Everything else, you all right. <laughs> so don't let the devil get you. Now, you know, when, when you feel this, this guilty conscience is after you've met him. And after you walk with him all these years. And you say, Lord, you, uh, this is all right, me and you walking. And, and, and all of a sudden you slip again. I guess I wasn't holy. I guess he didn't redeem me. Where you get that idea? I guess I'm, I'm in the hand of the enemy. No, you're in the hand of God. You just fell. And you fell right in his hand. And the blood was covered again. The blood was shed. Here, here's some blood. Bring it down. He said, come on, we're going to start this over again. Let's get up and believe that I am God. Now, one more thing. He said, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession, or the what? Testimony of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Do we believe in the blood this morning? We got access. We got intercession. What else we have? We got life. We got sanctification. What else did the blood do for us? He said, uh, you've been justified. You've been cleansed. Amen. And you know what else? You've been redeemed. Can you take that this morning? Can we accept that this morning? Oh, but he said, look, I need you to walk like I walk. I need you to understand that there's a way of God. And if you accept this blood, stay under the blood. The blood has certain requirements. Now, the blood says, stay in the house, and this is how you act in the house. Amen? You don't, you, don't, you don't go outside. You don't leave the protection of the blood in the name of the blood. You know, we, we want to get a, a little sack of blood to carry with us. He said, no. He said, stay in the house where the blood has been put over, where your testimony is. He said, every day, your test, I should see you. And all I should see is the blood over the doorpost because the death angel is out here. The enemy is out here. But every time the enemy sees the blood, he remembers this word, Satan, the Lord rebuked you. Anybody need that today? Do we need the blood over the doorpost? If we have it, do you really understand it doesn't matter about Satan's plan anymore? We don't really have to worry about it. We don't have to spend hours upon hours on YouTube. 
Oh, they're doing this. Oh, oh. Oh, they got this. Oh, here they come. <laughs> the blood rebukes all of that. We spend a lot of our lives, I've spent a lot of my life, examining the enemy's plan. The Lord reminded me last night. He said, apply the blood. Because, man, I was, hey, man, I know that this, this company, this, this people did this. This department did this. Here they come. I know Ferguson. I know Chicago. I know, I know uh, 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 the, the, the riots and, and the revolution in Egypt. I, all these things. God said, apply the blood, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you upset? But when you apply the blood, there's an act of faith. And that faith must be accompanied with what? Works. There are things to do in the house. Amen. So don't say, well, I'm going to come about a blood, but I'm going to, you know, I ain't really going to do what he says do. You're going to find yourself outside the house. And what's outside? But sorcerers, death, witchcraft, dogs, gnawing at the flesh is what's outside the house. Are we going to leave the house? We're going to stay under the blood. You see the power of the blood. Old song we used to sing, there's wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. You see what the wonder is. You see the seven wonders. The world has the seven wonders of the world. There's seven wonders about this blood that we accepted this morning. Don't ever turn it loose. Don't ever wash the door. Don't ever use anything but hyssop. Don't ever bring a, a, a bad offering to me. He said, I need it, one without spot and without blemish. Was Christ the one without spot yes. and without blemish? Yes. Apply that blood to the door. Keep it there. And we'll be protected, won't we? Did he say you wouldn't go down in the fire? No. But you're already living eternal life. Who you, what do you care? Oh, you mean I don't have to live eternal life here no more? Phew. Man, that's all right, Lord. So the next time I see you, I'll be in the, the realm of eternity. So I don't even have to be bothered with all this anymore, do I? That little two-year-old, he'll left me alone by then, won't he? Think about it. You, if you living eternally now, and you have to go to sleep, pray. Because the next time you wake up, you are living eternally where eternity is. So don't say that I live eternal life. There's nothing that can kill me. God didn't say that. He said, don't worry about the body that keeps on. Satan, you know, you know his, his big trump card is, I'll kill you. I'll kill your body. And he said, hey, man, you with me. I'm the one in charge of the body and the spirit and your soul. He said, hang with me eternally, starting right now. Can we start right now? We got so much to learn about it because we have so much to teach about it. See, our testimony is what's real. Our testimony is what's going to, what didn't Ezra and Nehemiah's testimony affect Artaxerxes? For those who are listening, we, we studied that this morning. Your testimony is what's going to save souls because they'll see the blood and they'll know you believe and then the Holy Spirit can help them. Be a witness this morning for God. Amen? Have you ready? Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it is in the name of Jesus and by the blood that we come. The shed blood of Christ who gave us access this morning. Thank you for the access. Thank you for the intercession. Thank you for the sanctification. Thank you for the justification. Thank you for life. Father, we thank you for redemption. Father, there's nothing else we can say but thank you. For we, we are the ones who have the filthy rags. You took it off of us. You bought us back. Thank you for it. Lord, help us to put the door, I mean the blood over the door today. And keep it there. And stay in the house. Stay obedient to our God. 
who are safe. Father, give us strength this morning, Lord, not only for ourselves, but that we may show others. We may set those who are captive free, that we may free those who are locked down because of Satan's deception. Help us, Father. Help us to overcome so we can help others to overcome as well. You said we would overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the testimony. Help us, Lord, to be a better witness for you. And in the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen.